Good morning, boys and girls. Today is chapter four of Dexter the Tough. Grandma was waiting at the curb when Dexter got off the bus that afternoon. She had curly white old lady hair and sturdy brown old lady shoes and a stretchy red old lady pantsuit. Dexter hoped nobody on the bus thought she was his mom. You don't have to come and get me, he said first thing as soon as he stepped off the bus. Grandma gave him a tired smile. I know, she said. I know you're a big boy, but I thought it might feel a little strange to you coming home to a different house. She pushed open the gate that separated her yard from the sidewalk. How was your first day of school? Dexter thought about how much he hated the principal and the secretary and the janitor and his teacher and the kids who had laughed at him. He thought about how he'd gotten in a fight, how he'd beaten up Robin Bryce. Then he thought about how mom and dad had said he wasn't supposed to make any trouble for grandma, how he wasn't supposed to worry her. It was okay, he said. The teacher sent home a list of supplies I need. He pulled the sheet of paper out of his backpack and handed it to grandma. Grandma frowned. Oh dear, she said. Back when your mother and Uncle Ted were in school, kids just needed paper and something to write with. What's this? Colored pencils? Fat markers and skinny ones too, she sighed. <sighs> Guess we'll have to run to the store after dinner. I have markers at home, Dexter said. I just forgot to bring them. Why hadn't mom or dad reminded him? Dexter felt mad again. He kicked at the step as he climbed toward grandma's porch, but his kick missed and he lost his balance and fell over backward. He landed flat on the sidewalk. He thought he heard kids laughing as the bus pulled away. Grandma squinted down at him. Mom would have said, child, what do you think you're doing? And dad would have said, a swing and a miss. Strike one. Can we see the instant replay? Bet you couldn't do that again if you tried. But grandma said in a scared voice, are you all right? And somehow that made Dexter feel worse. Like maybe there was something really, really wrong with him. Had dad's problem started with him falling down? I'm fine, Dexter told grandma fiercely as he jumped back up. His ankle hurt now and he banged his elbow hard. He tried not to limp across the porch. Grandma still looked worried. I made you a snack, she said, pushing open the front door. I remember how your mom and Uncle Ted were always so hungry getting home from school. Just come on into the kitchen. The snack was graham crackers and canned pears. Dexter looked down at the pears in their slimy syrup and felt his throat starting to close all over again. Too many homework, Grandma said, sliding into the chair across from him. Anything I can help you with? Uh, no, Dexter said. I mean, yes, I have some homework but I don't need help. <clears throat> Grandma just sat there. I can do it by myself, Dexter repeated. He really, really, really didn't want Grandma to see the story he'd written, the one he had to rewrite. Okay, said Grandma, inching her chair back. She clutched the table and pulled herself up. I'll leave you to it. Then I'll be in the living room watching TV if you need me. She began to hobble away. Dexter waited until she was gone. He heard her heaving herself onto the living room couch. He listened for the TV to come on before he pulled his story out of his backpack. He smoothed it out on the table. He drew a big X through everything he'd written before. Then he put the point of his pencil down directly beneath his teacher's questions. I'm the new kid, he wrote. He started to write, I am tough again but it wasn't worth it if he had to spell the word T-O-U-G-H. This morning, I beat up Robin Bryce in the bathroom, the one between the office and your classroom, with the blue tile on the wall. He looked at the teacher's questions again. He had answered everything except, why did you get in a fight? He took a break and spooned one of the slimy pear slices up to his mouth. It slithered down his throat like some tiny animal, a fish or a toad or a lizard. It seemed to be fighting to come back up. Dexter swallowed hard. He chewed a graham cracker that tasted soggy and nasty and old. Maybe it came out of a box that Grandma had kept from when Mom and Uncle Ted were little. Maybe one of them had cried on it. It tasted like tears. He pressed his pencil down hard against his paper. I was mad, he wrote. And boys and girls, that's the end of chapter four. Sounds like Dexter has a lot of things that are on his mind. I hope we find out more about him in chapter five.